Today, in response to the president's most crazed tweet of the day, the Obama administration's former CIA director, John Brennan, tweeted to the president, it's astounding how often you fail to live up to minimum standards of decency, civility, and probity. Seems like you will never understand what it means to be president, nor what it takes to be a good, decent, and honest person. So disheartening, so dangerous for our nation. Joining us now, former CIA Director John Brennan. He is our senior national security and intelligence analyst for MSNBC and NBC News. Uh, Director Brennan, what the last part of your tweet it, it cap, uh, really captured my attention, saying that it's so dangerous for our, our nation. In, in what ways? Well, good evening, Lawrence, and thank you for having me on. Uh, well, I think in two principal ways. First, I think Donald Trump has badly sullied the reputation of the office of the presidency. With his invective, with his constant um, disregard, I think, for human decency, as well as his befriending of autocratic leaders around the world, and his uh, continued pursuit of relationships to benefit himself as opposed to the country, I do think that America's standing in the world has also been tarnished. But I think even more fundamentally, what he is doing here in the United States is very polarizing, and he is, I think, the most divisive president we've ever had in the Oval Office. He is feeding and fueling uh, hatred and animosity and misunderstandings among Americans. And so I am very concerned when I look at some of the tweets that are out there and commentary, uh, we are just uh, fighting with each other as a nation. And this is something that the President of the United States traditionally has been the one to try to heal these domestic wounds, these domestic problems. But I think Donald Trump has failed repeatedly to try to do that. He continues just to play to his base of support and feeds them, basically with raw meat, uh, a lot of this language that tends to get them riled up. That is not something that is in our nation's security. I want to draw on your experience uh, prior to being CIA director <clears throat> when you worked in the Obama administration as an assistant to the president for Homeland Security, by the way, at exactly the same pay grade as Omarosa, uh, that, that we, what this story reveals this week is that we have a White House in which the president is saying as of today that he knowingly hired someone who he believed at the time was unqualified, brought them in there at that top pay grade, and that this person has now proven uh, that within the White House, uh, she was taping, she was recording conversations, including recording her final conversation uh, with the White House Chief of Staff, uh, which apparently took place in the Situation Room or in a room close to the Situation Room. Well, I think it's been very clear from the beginning of this administration that it has not done a very good job of vetting for senior personnel assignments. Number one. Number two, the fact that there has been now acknowledged by the White House that senior staff officers have been asked to sign a non disclosure agreement, I find mind boggling. That is something that never would have occurred to President Obama, President Bush, President Clinton, or others. But the fact that Donald Trump feels this sense of insecurity that he has to get people to sign these uh, agreements really, I think, reflects just the lack of sophistication, the, the lack of competence and the lack of, of trust that uh, people within the White House have for, for one another. So I, I do not uh, you know, agree that you know, Amorasa should have you know, taped that uh, conversation with John Kelly, but I also scratched my head to try to figure out why did John Kelly have that conversation with her in the White House Situation Room, which is a venue that's usually reserved for national security matters to talk about classified information. If he was going to relieve her of her duties, he should have done that in his office. Uh, that is the place where something like that would have been done. So it was just very puzzling. Uh, I, I want to get to a, a policy matter that is unprecedented and that is going to be with us long after the Omarosa controversy has been left behind. And that is a president of the United States who actually tweeted, tariffs are the greatest, a sentence that has never been spoken by a president before, including some of our uh, hi uh, historic champions of tariffs uh, in the distant past. You respond to that, to that by saying, using tariffs as a blunt force instrument against allies and partners is not only short sighted but also plays into the hands of Russia and China. Same is true with bombastic rhetoric against Iran. We need to be smarter, more sophisticated, more strategic. Uh, what is the, the tariff uh, 
regime that Donald Trump has imposed doing to national security? Well, it's alienating our closest allies and partners, whether you're talking about Canada or countries within the European Union, uh, using this tariff as a way to try to level all bilateral trade with other countries is just foolhardy. And so this is something that I think both Moscow and Beijing can point to and say to our uh, former allies and partners uh, that the United States cannot be counted upon, that uh, we're going to treat you more fairly, we're going to try to uh, replace the United States as a, as a trusted uh, partner, a trade partner. And so using tariffs across the board, I think it just again shows that Mr. Trump really doesn't understand international politics, international economics, as well as how this global world operates and interoperates today. It is something that I think he is very short-sighted about, and it may make uh, for good uh, noise on the campaign uh, trail but it is not a good geopolitics at all. One of the important enlightenments of the second half of the 20th century was that international trade with countries dramatically reduces the likelihood of war with those countries. Uh, if we are shipping them Coca-Cola, Levi's, or anything else uh, that we're making, soybeans, uh, and they're shipping things to us, the, the economic theory was that will create an, an important and peaceful kind of interdependence. It, was, it used to be thought of as part of defense policy. This seems lost on this White House. Well, absolutely. And that's why when I mentioned that the world, it needs to be as interoperable as possible because the movement of, of goods and products and services and people across borders is what allows countries to, to prosper. And if we're going to halt that and put these tariffs on different goods and services and to prevent that, that flow of, of people as well as of technologies and other things, it really is going to inhibit the continued growth of our, our world. Uh, and so again, this is something that uh, I think Mr. Trump has really deviated from the former you know, U.S. policy of previous administrations, which is that the United States, yes, is bigger and stronger than any other country, but we're going to use our economic power, our political and military power, in order to bring peace, prosperity to the world. Because if all boats rise, that helps the United States national security. And unfortunately, I do think that Russia and China are pointing now to the untrustworthiness of the United States as a way to make headway with a number of countries around the world. Former CIA Director John Brennan, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Lawrence. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.